So once again, my name is Bill Pittman. I'm the, the, the vice president, uh, senior vice president of the Sound Payments uh, Petro Group, pretty much uh, the general manager running the, running the show there for, to, to some extent. What I wanted to do today, well, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody for attending. I know there's a lot, everyone's got a busy schedule, a lot of things going on, uh, and, a, and a lot of distractions that you could have, especially today. So I appreciate you taking the time to, to attend this and, and learn a little bit about some of your options for EMV and, and then kind of go over our solution. So uh, hopefully that'll explain more about how our solution works and what benefits it has for you. So. So with that, I kind of wanted to make this a little educational as well, rather than just a total um, about our product stuff. And so starting off, uh, uh, we'll go into some more detail further into the presentation, but I think a lot of people know that they need to upgrade their pumps to support EMV. And we'll talk about some of the implications uh, associated with that later on in the slide. In the meantime, um, I think most people know they have a couple of different options for upgrading to EMV. One of them is uh, you can always buy a new pump. And that is what most of the pump manufacturers are obviously going to want you to do. Uh, uh, and we'll talk about some of the pros and cons associated with that. And, you know, one of them being uh, cost. And so they're going to want to sell you a new pump if, if, that, if you're open to that. So that's what they're always going to lead with. Another option is, is some of, most of the major pump manufacturers also have retrofit kits for some of their newer models. So it's not typically a universal solution, but there is an option where you can buy a retrofit kit from some of the, some of the major manufacturers. Um, once again, you might find out cost is, 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 it might be more expensive with them. Uh, the other thing that we've had some people do is they've actually bought brand new pumps that are not EMV capable, so they're much less expensive. And then what they do is, is they then can put in a retrofit kit in one of those pumps. So that way you get an EMV pump at a much, you get a brand new EMV pump at a much lower cost than buying an EMV capable pump right out of the box. Um, and then the other option, obviously, is to use a third party retrofit kit like ours. So that's mainly what I'm going to talk about in our in this presentation. So kind of starting with that, we'll move forward. And here's a little bit about sound payments. Uh, we're kind of a new player in this space. Uh, we're, uh, we're really a technology software company. We've got a couple of different divisions, uh, uh, one of them banking, um, and another one integrated POS for retail, and then the, the Petro Group, which, which is the one I'm in charge of. Um, and so we're, we're really trying to use new technologies uh, in, to, to solve old problems. And we're headquarters in Jacksonville, Florida, and we also have an office, our, our Petro offices in St. Pete slash Clearwater, Florida. Um, and then we've, we've got some other um, places in China and the Philippines as well. Uh, we've, uh, we've, been, we've been around for over five years in, in most of those other groups. Been in the Petro now, we've been building on this product for close to three years. Uh, and so we've been working on this product, we've been selling it for about a year. So we've got a, a number of installs out there, you know, working just fine. And so, uh, so we're moving quite along with that, taking advantage of this uh, mandate that's coming out that we'll talk about as well, where, where you need to upgrade to EMV. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was, is, you know, we are new to this and most of you may not be familiar with our name and our solution. So appreciate you coming here to learn about that. But kind of looking at this industry, uh, it seems like it's a duopoly with a couple of major um, companies uh, kind of dictating uh, the, your options out there. And so I encourage you and I appreciate you, you looking at our solution because I think all industries need competition. And so having competition, uh, you know, does nothing but makes the consumer win. Um, so one of the things we've also done is we've partnered with uh, other technology companies with PAX. You'll see some of our hardware from PAX. We've got another company, Boomtown, that we use for uh, first level support. CDE we do for distribution. And then Freedom Electronics is a distributor of ours who we'll talk about who's built some ret when we get into the kits, some of the retrofit kits for us. So the mandate. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, have read or heard something about this mandate that's happening in April uh, 21. 
Uh, it's been moved back a couple of times. Um, it was most recently moved back because of the, the virus out there, uh, kind of with all the lockdowns and everything going on, uh, the associations decided to move it back, but they're pretty firm about it now. So I, I wouldn't be counting on them moving it back again. Um, and so given that you know that you, so, so the implication there is, is, is that now the station will take on the liability if there's a chargeback. And so previously, if there was a chargeback, um, the, the acquirer took on the liability uh, and you didn't. But now if you take an EMV card and you don't have an EMV reader in there, uh, you, you, the, the chargeback, you'll lose the chargeback, first of all. Uh, and then it'll come back directly to you at the station. And the charge, so you'll really have no way of defending yourself and you'll be liable for the amount of that transaction. So, so that's really the implication on why you need to consider moving to, um, to supporting EMV. One other thing is, is I kind of went through this with retail a few years ago when they upgraded the EMV. And one of the, one of the, when, one of the things that happened was the, a lot of the retailers thought, oh, I don't need to upgrade. Um, and then what happened is the fraudsters out there identified those, those um, retail locations that didn't support EMV, and then they targeted them. And so while they may not have had chargebacks previously, they all of a sudden started getting chargebacks and then were on a major rush to, to upgrade their systems to support EMV. Uh, and as you know, the pumps are, are complicated with a lot of moving pieces involved. And so if you wait to the last minute or you wait till after the mandate and start trying to, to rush to get EMV implemented, you could be on a long waiting list with the installers as well as getting all the solution, all the components that you need to make it work. So I encourage everyone to try to uh, look at doing an EMV upgrade as soon as possible. Um, so if you do the EMV and you do an upgrade, there's retrofit solutions like ours that are out there. Some of the things you need to look for is to make sure that they support EMV, uh, that, that they also support MagStripe because you may have fleet cards or other things that uh, um, where you need to do use a MagStripe um, and contactless um, as well. Everything's moving to contactless. So if you're going to upgrade your system, you might as well upgrade it to be able, you need to make sure that you upgrade it to be able to support that. You also need to think about what's going to be involved in doing the implementation, how long it's going to take, what's gonna be involved in doing it. One of the nice advantage with a retrofit kit solution like ours is we can do one pump at a time. You can even put in one pump, test it out, see how it works. And then once you're happy with it, then do the rest of your station. You don't have to take the station down. You don't have to do any of those things. Uh, so so uh, it makes it makes it a way to, to do the implementation without shutting everything down and losing money while you're down and then um, going through all the complications associated with that and rushing to get it done. Um, the other thing you need to think about is security. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that people do payments. Um, on, and I'll show you how people are doing it today and then how our solution works. And so security is a top concern that you need to be worried about. I think everyone knows there's been a lot of um, security issues historically associated with uh, pumps. And so I think you'll see some of the security implementations that we've put into our solution and see how they can benefit you. Um, you want to try to keep card data outside the store, and that's kind of what we've done. And so that's something that you need to take into consideration when you're considering how you're going to upgrade your, your systems. Um, and then the certification. So the, the device itself has to be certified. And so, so you need to make sure that it's certified with the payment processor that you're using. So, uh, and then you need to make sure you understand all the implications associated with at the station. Um, what the different components are and if they change, how that impacts your certification. So I'll talk about that as well. Um, so real quickly, I'll go over how uh, payments are historically done and how uh, I think virtually all the other alternative options that are out there are how, they, how are they doing it today. And so what happens is the pump, the device that's at the pump is really an input device where you, you swipe your card historically, you, done, you swiped your card, and now with EMV, you basically dip your card um, into the reader. The reader then takes the data from, uh, from your card and sends it to uh, a, a payment application that's typically running on something like the four court controller. So there, you've, got this trend, you've got this data now flowing from the pump to the four court controller that could be compromised potentially. Then it goes from the four court controller to the payment processor. Um, and, and then it go, the four court controller then turns the pump on and then reverses the process once you've got the, 
the certification once you've got the, the fuel pumped into the in, into the car, the vehicle. So, so that's how people do it today. Uh, some of the concerns that you need to think about is the, the, whether you're in PCI scope because you've got cardholder data flowing through your system, uh, whether it's um, whether the, you know how how your system is handling all that information, so that it whether it um, whether it's causing any kind of um, issues associated with uh, someone being able to compromise and get a hold of your data. So those are some of the considerations that you need to take into consideration with the uh, um, way things are done today. Um, looking at how our solution works um, and how it's different is we took a completely different approach when we, when we went to the station. And what we did was is we, the device that we actually put in a pump is a payment terminal of itself. So rather than going through the four core controller to process the payments, the device in the pump is a payment terminal. So it's got the payment application right there. And then what it does is it travels and authorizes the card directly to the payment processor from the pump. So it uses Wi-Fi to do that. Uh, so you don't have to worry about um, dragging any cable or any connectivity issues. You just gotta make sure that you've got Wi-Fi in the station. The, the device itself, because it is a payment terminal, it's also PCI certified, just like the device that's on your countertop in, 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 in your convenience store meaning that if somebody ever tries to tamper with the device, it'll, it'll brick and stop working, basically self-destructs. So if anybody tries to do anything to that device, it's not gonna work, it's gonna stop working. So that's one component of the security that most other systems don't have. The other thing is, is that we do end-to-end -end encryption so that the minute that you insert your card into that device, it'll, it'll, it gets encrypted and it's then sent as an encrypted bundle directly to the payment processor. So if anybody ever did get a hold of that data in any way, it'd be useless to them because of the encryption that it's using. So that's another thing that our solution does that's kind of unique. Um, and so what we do is, is we, then, we, we talk to the processor, get the authorization, and then we go into, then we talk to the four port controller uh, and then turn the pump on in, in the station. So, so we've got a different approach on how we're solving the problem. I think you'll find it a, a much lower cost much more secure, easier to implement solution. So just kind of, as I mentioned here, there's, there's no PCI concerns because the data is encrypted at the point of, that you implement it. Um, the certification uh, is independent of the four port controller and independent of what's going on in the station. So that means if you change things uh, it, it's not going to impact your certification. Well, if you're using the traditional approach, if you change something at, at, something within the in the flow, uh, getting to the payment processor, it would impact, and you'd have to, and the company would have to redo a certification. Also, if you've got different stations with different configurations, you'd have to make sure that the solution that you're implementing in the historical approach has been certified with all the different implementations that your stations may have. With us, it doesn't matter because it's, a, it's the device itself that's going directly to the payment processor and what forecourt and what information you're doing downstream doesn't matter. Um, the other thing is, is because the device that we're actually putting in a pump is a, is a computer, now you've got the option of doing other things down the road with that device because it's a smart device now, it's not a dumb device. Um, and then the device that we put in the station that talks to the different four port controllers is something that we call a bri the bridge. And it's basically a one to many uh, component. So you put that in there and, and whether you're using a Verifone Passport or Wayne Fusion, et cetera, um, it doesn't matter because it can talk to different controllers. So that gives you the ability to have a solution now that works with different pumps, different controllers, um, different payment processors, et cetera. So, um, some of the pain points, if you look at uh, some of the different options we talked about, first of all is the cost, the cost of new equipment and construction. Um, you, if you have to put in a new pump, uh, you may have to tear up some concrete, you may have to lay new cable, uh, you may have to get new permits. Um, the station's gonna be down for a while. Uh, and while the station's down, you're not selling anything. Not only are you not selling uh, fuel, you may not be selling um, stuff in, inside as well. Um, and then once you've made that commitment, you can't roll back if something changes. As I mentioned, you could do a, a trial with our stuff in, in one of your pumps, make sure you're happy with it, and then upgrade the rest of your pumps at your station. Um, we use this uh, 
method of integration called semi-integration, which means the, the, the device itself is that payment terminal that I talked about. And so all, all the, the point of sale or et cetera, what they're doing is they're integrating into that device in the semi-integration mode. Um, it allows you to work with your existing equipment, work with your existing software. So it's a much faster implementation. Um, we have people that are, that are upgrading uh, pumps with a, a each side taking maybe 15 minutes to a half an hour. So, so let's say worst case scenario, you should be able to upgrade each pump within an hour. So you can just move down each pump very quickly um, and, and upgrade them to support EMV. Um, you can do that phased in implementation that I talked about, and then you don't have any PCI concerns. You don't have to worry about anything getting hacked or anything like that because the data is encrypted. So here's kind of a, an example that we put together from talking to different people. Um, typically, it can take up to a month to, to, um, to, to get your pump upgraded if you're replacing your pumps completely. Dispensers are anywhere from, from twelve dollars to $15,000. So depending on how many dispensers you've got, you've got a cost associated with that. You may have to buy other you know, supporting equipment, such as nozzles and hoses and fixtures and stuff like that. Um, if you have to do anything to your tank, that's going to cost you more money and then you may have to get permits in order to um to support all these changes that you're making and then your revenue from your station uh who knows what that's going to be for that total amount of time that you're down so so from just from talking to different people out there we came up with this cost it could be up to two hundred thousand um, dollars to upgrade your pumps to support emv now when you look at our solution you'll find out that it's much much more cost effective so here's a, an example of the device that we put in to the pump. It's, um, it's a, we call it, a, it's an IM20, it's made by PAX. We've got a special relationship with PAX where we're reselling this product and we spent, like I said, a couple of years building this solution with them. It, uh, it's, that's what it looks like. It, it's been designed to be outdoors. So you can, it's weatherproof, it can be, it, it's you know, shock proof for the most part. Uh, it, it can be beat on, it can be rained on, it, it can go down to cold temperatures, um, can go to hot temperatures. So it's really been designed for this outdoor environment. It, it's bright so that you can see it in the sunlight, et cetera. So that's the device that we use that we put in the pump. Um, then I mentioned to you the bridge software. That's the, that's the software that runs in the station that talks to the four port controllers. What we've done is we put it on a payment terminal. So the terminal kind of serves as a backup and allows you to do things like print, print rece reprint receipts if you need to. Uh, but, it, but the main reason why we stuck it on this device is because this device run, is a payment terminal, but it runs the Android operating system. <clears throat> so we were able to put our application on there. And now since all the equipment that you've got in your station are PAX equipment, PAX has something called a terminal management system where they're able to manage and maintain the applications remotely. So what that does is it allows us to automatically upgrade and update uh, applications as things need to change, um, as configurations need to change, as there's new versions of the applications that are out there. We can do all of that remotely. The other thing that we've got in there is uh, with, with regards to the devices, the IM20s that live at your pump, they have keys injected in them, and those are for security as well as for debit. Uh, and so we're able to remotely inject those keys as well. And by the way, that, that, that screen that's on this device here is a touch screen so that you don't need a keyboard. It has a keyboard that pops up on it. Um, and it also supports pin debit so that if you need to enter a pin, um, if you're doing debit, it also has um, pin on glass on it so that you can do enter the pin directly from this device as well. And so the combination of these two devices, are, they're both made by PAX, which is the leading manufacturer of terminals in the US and they uh, can all be re managed remotely with this terminal management system. So it gives us the, the ability to not have to go out to the station every time we need to do an upgrade or make a change. Um, kind of combined with that, we also have um, a cloud. So we upload all the information to the cloud so that you can get reports um, and you can change configurations associated with your station, all from, we call them portals. Um, this, this solution also can integrate into your um, convenience store, you know, in-station POS system as well. So we've got, that's the other side of our company the, where, where we can work with that point of sale system to do the integration. 
um, and you all using the same cloud now technology in order to um, process transactions not only at the pump but also in, in, in store as well. And we have an API for all this stuff so that if you're a third party point of sale system and you want to integrate the, the pump uh, transactions in with your system so that you can have consolidated accounting. We have APIs that allow you to do that. We have APIs where you can lock in, um, get, get different information for reports and things like that and fully integrate them into your point of sale system. And we're working with a number of point of sale systems that have done that as well. And so if that's something of interest, uh, you can always contact us and, and we can um, mention to you some of the different point of sale systems we're working with. Um, also, we also have an online support system so that if uh, if you needed to get additional information, you wanted to find out how to integrate things like that, you can go to our online, we call it the Sound Hub. But uh, so these are the different groups within our company that you can go in and specifically select which group you want to get information on. So you know we're the Petro solution, so that if you select the Petro solution, you can go get user guides and manuals, knowledge base, FAQs, all that kind of stuff is available online. You can also go in at this point, and if you look on the the right-hand side, there's the ability to, to um, add a ticket so that if you've got an issue that you need to be, get resolved, um, you can create a ticket right here online, and then we can um, address that issue depending on what the, what the situation is. Um, so the other thing that you can do from this portal is, is order equipment too. So if you're a reseller and you've gone through a whole reseller process in order to buy stuff, uh, you can come here and, and order order your equipment uh, right online as well and have it sent to you for your stations. So with that, um, I'm gonna talk now, I've also invited Corey Tregel, if I pronounce his last name correctly, uh, and um, he's gonna talk a little bit about, um, uh, he's got more hands-on experience about doing the upgrades and integrations in with the different pumps. So Corey, you wanna take it from here? Yeah, sure, that'd be great. Um, so yeah, as Bill said, we have many integrations into many different pumps, as he's shown here on his screen. Um, really, a pump itself is not a factor on what we can integrate to. Um, we're more based around the point of sale that you're using inside the station uh, to know the integration. Basically, the only thing our sort of rule of thumb is, is that your pump can uh, communicate back to your point of sale, we can communicate to your pump. Um, so the pictures that Bill's showing here on his screen, um, that's just sort of a uh, placement of what we've done with the multiple pumps. We can uh, pretty well place those depending on customer preference. Um, we also have some kits that assist with the placement of these devices. So the kitting itself is more of a uh, door replacement, partial door, door replacement. Um, many of these doors have panels that can be removed with about, you know, eight to 12 screws. And basically we have a panel that goes back in place with our equipment mounted on it with the same screw, screw alignment. And then on the inside of the pump, we practically just uh, plug power in. We're not actually connecting our device directly to the fuel pump at all. Uh, we, uh, our device utilizes Wi-Fi at the site. Um, so all communications for our device is a Wi-Fi setup. Uh, we do not utilize any of the two wire or ethernet connections inside the fuel pump. With that being said, uh, that helps a lot with construction costs because I know with a lot of the new pumps, a ethernet is recommended or required. And so we've been able to completely move away from using an ethernet cable uh, with utilizing our Wi-Fi, therefore you do not have to run new cabling uh, for our units. In this slide, uh, Bill's showing just sort of a, uh, a smaller version of the kit, a more sleek, uh, make it work type solution where uh, I was able to remove the old card reader, slide our card reader into place, and then mount on the back side of the pump with a bracket. Um, and that's a very easy solution as well, just like the kitting. And as, as I said previously, uh, there are parts on the pump where 
you can just pop it out and put our card reader in. Um, in this slide, you'll see that uh, I was installing on a Gilbarco 500S. Um, I popped out the tap pay uh, slot and put our device in. Um, it did not, this does not show the finalized version of it where the keypad was removed because our device is full touch screen. Everything's built into our device itself, the card reader, the touch tap pay, uh, the pin on glass and zip code on glass. It's all built in directly to our units. So we don't utilize the old keypad and we don't utilize the old card reader. We can, however, utilize the old uh, screen. It will, uh, depending on the point of sale that you're using, it can prompt, prompt along with our screen. So here's sort of a uh, before and after of a Gilbarco 500S in which the customer chose to remove the uh, remove the old display and replace it with ours. So basically what has happened here, as you can see there on the right, uh, the keypad was replaced with a blank template. The old card reader was replaced with the blank template. And then the screen was replaced with our are all in one unit. Sort of the same situation here on this Gilbarco Advantage where the customer chose to uh, have a full screen pin pad and card reader replacement. Uh, this is more along the lines of our kits um, where you can just pop off the old door uh, I believe those Gilbarco advantages just have a single slide bar uh, that you pull out and that whole door panel comes off and then you can uh, just reverse it with our door panel and put our door panel on and slide the bar back in and then plug in power and you're installed. And then here we have a Gilbarco advantage in which we kept the customer display. Uh, the card reader and keypad were, were replaced with blank templates. The customer display, uh, the original customer display stayed intact. And then our card reader was installed on the right hand side of the pump rather than the left. That as well as the Gilbarco advantage. Just a little different way of doing it. next or uh, just sort of an array of different pumps uh, first one there is a token pump uh, we replaced the old card reader with our card reader uh, went directly back into that old slot uh, second one over is a ovation uh, the original card reader was on the right hand side uh, it was replaced with a template and then the screen itself was replaced with our unit uh, the third one there in line, that was actually a brand new Wayne Helix pump. Um, so what that what that customer had done was they ordered a brand new pump uh, without any of the payment terminals in it and basically installed our payment terminal afterwards, saving them, I want to say, three to $4,000 on that pump alone uh, by just not ordering the manufacturer payment and putting our payment device on there. And then the last one there is a Encore 300 in which we uh, replace the customer display. Um, those have a soft touch keypad. So it's just a black vinyl covering the keypad and then a blank template where the old card reader was at. All right, thank you, Corey. Um, so hopefully you saw some examples. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, uh, that we have also now partnered with uh, Freedom Electronics and they've got, they're building really plug and play retrofit kits. So it, uh, you don't have to jump through all those hoops that Corey was doing. You can just basically replace the panel. It's got an easy way to connect the power, um, easy way to connect the printer uh, and, and then it's ready to go. So it really simplifies the, the process and looks really professional when it's installed in these devices. And, and they're building retrofit kits for all the major pumps that are out there. So the, like the Wayne Vista, the Wayne Ovation, uh, Cabarco Advantage, Cabarco Encore 300, 500, 
and then the 500S and 700S. So they're gonna have plug and play retrofit kits available uh, and you can buy them directly from them. You can buy everything really directly from them because they're a distributor of ours. Otherwise, if you wanted to become a reseller of ours, uh, we don't sell the retrofit kits, um, but what you would do is you'd sign a, an NDA with us. Um, you'll, you'll get a, we'll then go through a reseller agreement and then we pick out, you pick out how you want your products to be supported. We've got a number of different options. Uh, if you want us to do everything we can, if you want to do frontline support and you want us to do back end support, we can do that as well. Um, one of the things I mentioned is that we, uh, we've got all the purchasing available on this sound hub that I said that if you're buying from us, if you're buying from somebody else like freedom, you can, you can work through them on the purchase process. But if you buy from us, you, you, you need to use that sound hub that automates the whole purchasing process so that uh, everything's all automated. You don't even have to make a phone call to do anything like that. And then since we've been working on this product for so long with PAX, we've got an exclusive with them on this IM20 product. Um, so, so you've got to buy it through us or through one of our distributors. Uh, and the reason is, is, is that uh, to build a solution like this takes a long time. To get the certifications with the payment processors take a long time. Uh, and since we had been working on it so long, um, and given kind of the timeline associated with the, the EMV um, mandate that's come up, uh, they, they thought it was best to really focus on us and, and, and help us help you uh, upgrade your pumps rather than have a bunch of people out there trying to do it and um, not knowing what they're doing and things like that. So they thought the fastest way to go to market was to partner with us and do that. So that's what we've done. So with that, um, I wanted to find out if there's anybody has any questions on this. And if you do, shoot them my way and we can answer them. Okay, I've got a couple questions here. Um, so one of the questions is, is your solution certified with the major dispenser manufacturers? Um, in other words, will your solution void the manufacturer's warranty if it's still within the warranty period? Uh, Corey, you're still on, you wanna take that? Yeah, so I would say on anything that we actually would have to cut into, yes, that would potentially void the warranty if you have a new pump. Uh, the majority of our pump and our installation base is based around either there was no payment terminal there to start with, and so we added to it, or it's an older pump that's beyond warranty. So that's sort of been our two install bases. Hey, Corey, aren't most of the warranties about a year or so anyway? Two years, I believe. Okay, so, so a lot of the pumps that we're upgrading are past their warranty anyway. So, so it, it isn't always relevant as, a, as an issue. Um, okay, then the other question we've got is, who does your installation and who provides service on your equipment? Corey, you wanna talk about that as well? Yeah, so we have, we have aligned people all over the US that are pump techs to uh, service and install our units. Um, however, if you do have a, a uh, pump installer that you prefer, we can always train and install with them as well. Okay, and then uh, I've got another question. Um, what if the existing dispenser has media and is under a media contract? Will the media carry over to your solution? I would say, no, we don't currently have any media offerings with our solution. Um, all the media offerings are uh, through the current uh, pump distributors, and those are typically on the new pumps that are still within that manufacturer warranty um, is what I typically run into with the media ones. We don't really have any offerings there yet. We are working towards a media offering in the future, though. Could they still run their existing media um, with our solution independent? Yeah, yeah, they could run it independent of ours um, and just have a side-by-side -side solution there. 
um, but it's nothing we have currently integrated into. So yes, you could, uh, if you have media running on your pump, you could leave your current display, which could run your media. And then our card reader would go potentially in the old card reader slot uh, and just replace it. So you'd have two different solutions on there. Okay, thanks, Corey. Um, any other questions out there? Okay, it doesn't look like it. Is it like there are any more questions now? I um, wanted to thank everybody for coming and let you know that uh, when I end this webinar, we'll, um, there'll be a survey and I appreciate you taking a look at that survey and answering that, that'll help our, our marketing people. Uh, and so um, appreciate you spend a couple of seconds after I end this, um, end this webinar to go ahead and answer that, those questions there. So if there are last chance, any other questions? Um, oh, okay, there is another question here. Um, what is the backup when Wi-Fi goes down? So currently we don't have a backup for a down Wi-Fi. Um, a, lot of, a lot of things that we recommend, um, we have a recommended Wi-Fi platform that we do use. Uh, plus a 4G device uh, to go in place to connect that Wi-Fi to the internet in case your internet goes down. Okay. Um, all right. Well, it looks like that's about it. So I want to once again thank everybody. Um, oh, wait. Did I get another question here? Let me see. Um, oh, is it UL approved? So Corey, you want to answer that? Yes, we do have full UL approval on this. Uh, we got the certifications for the at pump UL on this device. And the kits as well. Yeah, and then the, the standard product, because it is a payment terminal, has a UL certification associated with it as well. So, so it's double UL certified, <laughs> if you will. Okay, um, anything else? Uh, oh wait, it looks like there may be one more. Yep, okay. Can we get the file of this presentation? Um, I guess we do that. Um, I'll have to check with our marketing department um, and get back with you, Tim. Um, and if other people want it, I think we can make it available. Um, and then there is a recording that we've done through this as well. So we can make that available as well. So, so um, Tim's asking about that. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll check with marketing and get back with you, Tim. I think we have your contact information. So that shouldn't be an issue. And then if other people want it, if you want to send uh, an email to us, um, we'll, we'll respond and make it available to you as well. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And um, we, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. And if you have any other questions, please contact us directly. Um, I'm Bill Pittman, uh, um, bill.p at soundpayments.com. So if you want to send me something direct, you can. Otherwise, you can contact um, sales at soundpayments.com, et cetera, and um, we'll get back to you. Appreciate everyone uh, joining. And with that, like I said, is I'm going to go ahead and uh, in the webinar. And if you could answer the, the polling question, I'd appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks again.